Hello, and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm at the DCF Art Gallery in Gross Point. This gallery showcases many of our remarkable Michigan artists, including our first one, Tim Shoemaker, who creates lifelike sculptures by welding and manipulating metal. We caught up with him inside his studio to find out just how he's able to create such realism in his works. Kind of the nice thing about being here and doing your own thing is no rules. I don't like rules. When I started making artwork, I realized that that's what I'm supposed to do. I just feel at home making artwork. And I am at home making artwork. I was a portable mobile welder. I would go to job sites, construction job sites, landscape job sites and you know repair their equipment or um, install anything that had to do with steel fabricating. I started doing artwork around 2007. When the economy got bad I had found a lot of time on my hands so I just started playing around with making metal artwork and uh, you know after a while I realized that I like doing that more than what I was doing, which I liked doing the portable welding service, but I just enjoyed making, you know, metal artwork a lot more. It helped my income, you know, I was able to sell some artwork, but also still do portable welding service. When I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist, but, you know, I wasn't as good of a graphic artist as I wanted to be, so I kind of always felt like I was an artist since I was a kid, but just didn't know what my medium was. You know, then I realized, and once I started fabricating the steel artwork, that that's what I wanted to do. I just feel like I'm totally satisfied while I'm in the process of it. Actually, when I get towards the end of making a piece of artwork, I try to string it along and make it last a little bit longer. The materials I use are scrap coils of steel mainly. It comes from a, a, a friend of mine is a, a manager at a steel shop. And for whatever reason, customers will order a coil of steel and it won't fit their, uh, their criteria or their, their quality and they scrap it out. I use bicycle parts, I use some random scrap pieces, you know, but they have to be the right piece. The antlers on this gear over here are screwed on from inside. Those are shed antlers that were found like in the woods after the season. So deer shed their antlers after winter. So if you walk through the woods, you can find antlers. So a friend of mine found two sets of antlers and he gave them to me and he said, here, you know, maybe you can make something with these. I decide I'm gonna make something. So I start just looking at all different kinds of images of that, of what I wanna make. And I look at it over a period of time. I will go on the computer and Google images of what I want to make, and I'll make a, a folder with just a lot of images, different images of what I want to make, you know, and look through them all from different angles. I use the grinder a lot also for uh, texture. That's what makes it look like fur. These are my paint brushes. Most of the stuff that I make is just kind of on the fly. Just this piece is twice of what that is, or that's how I measure. There's not so much fire as there's electricity. You know, the electricity is what fuses metal together. I don't use a torch as much as I use a welder. This is a MIG welder, and when I pull this trigger, the wire feeds out. Also, besides the wire feeding out, it introduces this gas, which is argon carbon dioxide gas, and uh, it creates a little atmosphere right where the weld is taking place, and because with oxygen present, it would be a bad weld, so that's what happens. It feed the wire, and it's steel wire and, and gas, and you pull the trigger and go. A torch makes, you know, it makes fire, it's for cutting, you know, cutting thicker steel. But I cut a lot of my steel is thinner, so I cut it with um, snips and shears.
I try to make things that appeal to all different kinds of people. I'll make fish, I'll make birds. Besides nature, I make other things. Some of my favorite pieces are, I made a bald eagle that has, um, he has a seven foot wingspan. He was kind of like my biggest piece that I've ever made. He's in a motorcycle shop on Van Dyke, Detroit Motorcycle. He's in the front window. The reason that I started making an elephant is because I had a customer that wanted me to make a much smaller elephant. And I think her expectations were way under what I wanted to do with an elephant. So that kind of inspired me to make an elephant. I would say that conservatively this elephant, when I get done with him, will be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 200 hours. I sell my artwork at shows. I sell it through some galleries. A lot of word of mouth. I sell it through a lot of word of mouth. I do commissions. The first little guitar that I built was as a commission. So we get our templates um, to, to trace the image out onto the steel. And once we do that and cut them out and mold the steel, this is the one that I did a few weeks ago of a Fender Stratocaster, and it's the same process. But I cut out a top half and a bottom half of the body and put them together with a strip that goes around. It takes a while. As I string it, I start on the inside with the strings and attach them on the inside and feed them through a little hole. And then once I bring them up here through the, uh, through the bridges and onto the tuners, these tuners are nails and I cut a little hole in the end of the nail. So when I feed the wire through and have the nail going through the, the headstock, it turns, so I tighten up the, I'll tighten up the string, and once it gets tight enough, I'll weld it on the back side. I just love to be here and making artwork. I'd rather make artwork than make money. The happiness that I feel now is just that, um, you know, that I'm able to make this kind of artwork. That's what makes me happy now.